Hello folks, my name's Jim Starling. You might know me from my YouTube channel, Definitely Not A Guru. I'm here today in Stafford at the Arnold Clark Innovation Centre, where we look at all things present and future in terms of EV technology. So Stuart, I might be stating the obvious, but this doesn't look like an electric motor. Why is it here? No, you're absolutely right. This is a, a combustion engine. This is a, a diesel engine taken from a, a Ford Mondeo. But it's important to show all innovations here at the centre. You know, it's not just about electric cars. You know, uh, we want to show the innovations of the past. And of course, the combustion engine has powered our cars, you know, since the early 1900s. And it's also good to compare that to an electric motor. So obviously the purchase price of an EV is a big concern for a lot of people at the moment. How do we expect that to develop in future? Interestingly enough, electric cars are actually on the same kind of pathway of what mobile phones were back in uh -huh. the day. So when they first came out, they were very expensive. More people bought them and they got cheaper over time. Exactly the same thing is going to happen with electric cars. The more people that actually buy them, the cheaper they become. We do have a large selection of vehicles on site, everything from self-charging hybrids to plug-in hybrids, as well as your full-blown battery electric vehicle. But, but one of my favourites has to be the BMW iX40 xDrive uh -huh. dual motor. Um, you can get it, of course, in the iX50 as well as the M60 variant, which varies from 5.9 seconds, not 60, all the way to 3.7, wow. which is nice and quick, yeah. So I have to ask, what is a 1954 Austin A30 doing in the EV Innovation Centre? So, so that's actually uh, quite a good question, to be fair. So this vehicle, believe it or not, was actually purchased by Arnold Clark himself back in right. 2001. So we kind of like to have it in here to show, you know, the big difference in technology from back in 1954 to where we are now, you know, with the BMW iX. Yeah. As well as just pay a little bit of homage to himself and, you know, what he's been able to create and just the centre as it is now. It's really interesting. Yeah, very much so. So a lot of people don't actually know that the first electric car was actually made much closer to home than we actually realise. So the first one was made by a man called Robert Anderson up in Scotland. And then moving on, you got your first hybrid car. It's now, 1899, the first 1899, yeah. So that was made by Ferdinand Porsche. Mm -hmm. So obviously everybody knows Porsche now, but Ferdinand Porsche actually started on hybrid cars before he went on to his combustion engine vehicle. So really impressive that he did that so early on. Now, obviously on the moon, there's no atmosphere like on Earth. There's no oxygen or anything like that. So up on the moon, they used three lunar rovers. They had little batteries and solar panels on them and powered all by electricity. And they're still all up there. They did three missions and uh, you never know, they might do some more. None of the vehicles here are for sale. This is purely an educational centre here to help people choose what's best for them, whether they're better suited to a battery electric vehicle or perhaps a hybrid vehicle for their next purchase. And really that Austin A30 being in here really highlights just how far car innovation and car technology has come in the last 70 years. I'm the business specialist here at the Stafford Innovation Centre. Uh, and I help to provide businesses with support and advice on the best way to go EV, um, whether that's outright purchase, contract hire, or looking to set a salary sacrifice scheme up for the employees. Yeah, and of course it becomes an employee benefit rather than just... Yeah, um, obviously the employees um, get to save some tax that they'll pay on their wages, um, and for the employer they'll save on the national insurance costs as, uh, towards the business. So the best way to charge your EV is by using a home charger, but there are now over 35,000 public chargers available in the UK, with about 1,000 extra being added to the network every month. They're not without their downsides though, they can be a bit pricey, and there's always that chance that an internal combustion engine car is going to park right in front of them. So this is the one I'm most familiar with, the easy one, because I've actually got one. I got mine uh, from Bumblebee and uh, it's just exactly what it says, it's just 
really easy. Yeah, it's one of the most popular ones on the market at the moment. It's very reliable as well. Um, they do come in a range of colors. So if you don't want black or white, then you can actually get them pretty much in all the colors of a Tesla, uh, conveniently enough. Something that a lot of people might not know also is that you can actually have up to three of these on your property at once, uh, which is quite a unique thing for a home charging option. And um, so that just means that if you've got three cars at home and you want to charge them all at once, it will be able to do that as well. And then we've got things like this connected to, which obviously looks great if you're if you're charging two vehicles at once, you've got the Zaptec Go. But really what we're seeing here today is just a small sample of what's available on the market. Yeah, exactly right. There is a actual ton of options that you can actually look out there. And there's always new different wall boxes and home charging options coming out all the time. These are just a few examples that visitors and customers can have a look at because everybody's looking for something slightly different depending on their setup at home. And uh, yeah, there is just all sorts of different options out there. The knowledge from the guys at the Innovation Centre is very impressive, but I couldn't walk around looking at all these EVs all day without taking one for a spin. So one of the first things you'll notice when you drive an EV is the difference in the power delivery compared to an internal combustion engine car. There's no gearbox to go through, there's no turbo to spool up. And that means all the power is available from the second you touch the accelerator. There is a little learning curve that comes with that, but typically that's just a few seconds. And I have to say, once you go back into an internal combustion car, it feels like you're driving something from the past. One thing this car does is makes you a better parent. Strangely, when you turn the car off, you get a screen prompt reminding you to check the back seat so that you don't toddle off into Tesco's and leave the kids in the car. The Innovation Centre is a pressure-free, sales-free area where you can draw on the knowledge of the incredibly helpful staff to help decide if battery electric vehicles are for you.